Oh, God bless the brothers that's been faithful this week. And their families and their children. And that request, bless those that would like to be here tonight. That's able to be. God, our Father, we just don't know how to thank you for all your good blessings. But we ask it all in that precious and loving Savior, our Savior, our sweet Jesus, in his name. And amen. amen. Some faults in me. 
What are we supposed to do about them? Go to talk about them to the other brothers and sisters? Let's take them to the Lord in prayer. Right. The Lord can help us, strengthen us, help us to overcome some of these things. So we're to know each other, not just to find our faults. That's not the reason we're supposed to know each other. That we can grow closer together and help each other and be a strength to each other. We're going to have a lot of problems in this life. And you know one of the tools that God uses to help His children more than anything? Is our brothers and sisters. Coming out to an old-fashioned service like this and listening to the gospel. It giving us a little bit of encouragement. Coming out to a service like this and hearing an old gospel song that may kind of cheer our mind a little bit. That's what it's all about. We need to, to know each other. A lot can be said about a lot of this, but there's some verses on down here that I, I'd like to get to. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, those brethren that's over you, admonish you, and that you, those that you labor with. <clears throat> and be at peace among yourselves. Sometimes we've got to work hard to have peace. Sometimes we need to work hard to have peace in our own life. But I know where that peace comes from. I know where to tell you all find of that too. Yes. Now we exhort you. He's already beseeched us. Now he's going to exhort us. Now we exhort you, brethren. Warn them that are unruly. We're not doing what we're supposed to. What should we do? We need to warn them. Good advice. Good advice. Warn them that are unruly. What are we warning them of? I think we've heard that warning here down through the week. The danger of God's judgment being poured out upon individuals. The chastisement of God. What, what's even more than what's on this earth of being a, warned by a brother that stands where I am or a brother in church or a sister is uh, hellfire on the day of judgment. We need to warn our people of that. Comfort the feeble-minded. I need comfort at some times. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. Some of those thoughts we got sometimes, I mentioned a little ago, we need to be patient with each other. God's made us just like we are. God's fashioned us in our own personalities. Sometimes we got to struggle within this old flesh to keep it where that it needs to be. And through the Spirit, we can overcome every bit of it. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and of all men. <clears throat> and he gives us some more good advice. Rejoice evermore. Sound like he's telling them that there's some problems you got to take care of. There's some unruly members you got to deal with. There's some folks that's feeble minded. There's some folks you got to be patient with. But you know what? In every bit of all that, I'm thankful I can rejoice right in the midst of tribulation. <laughs> that I can rejoice knowing that all around me, knowing that I might be taking my next breath, my last breath, that I can rejoice in knowing where, I'm, where my salvation is tonight. Thank the Lord. That I can rejoice in the hope that I've got, not in myself, not in each other, but I can rejoice in the hope that I've had with Christ Jesus our Lord. And I thank my God for that. Rejoice evermore, not just when it's going good for you, uh, rejoice evermore. Rejoice. We've told them sometimes, sometimes they'll say, well, I don't feel like rejoicing. Do it anyway. Yeah. You may start feeling a little better when you start doing that. Do it anyway. I didn't feel like coming to church tonight, you may say. Go anyway. You might get a blessing out of go. Right. I don't feel like raising my hands and saying thank you, Lord. Do it anyway. You might get a blessing out of it. I don't feel like praying right now. Do it anyway. You might get a blessing out of it. When we deny ourselves and put forth a little more effort, we're, we, we're liable to get a blessing. Do you think us, brethren, when we get up here, hit the floor every time, running, preaching every time we stand in the pulpit? You know what we've got to do, these brethren, this week, and Brother Don, all the years he's been preaching, we've got to put ourselves to the side. And we've got to put forth a little bit of effort on our part. And when we start working, even though, as he said there, be in, in season and out of season. When we don't even feel like it, I think there's times that we'll stand here that we feel like we're so far away from God. And he's told us to still go right ahead and tell them what you're supposed to. And that's the way we've got to do tonight. So rejoice right in the midst of problems. Things are going good. Rejoice. We used to sing a song 
a lot of times, Brother Tom and Brother Roger and Brother Nolan and a lot of us, things are going good with you, kneel and pray. Things are going bad with you, kneel and pray. We need that. We need that as we go on. Then he says in verse 17, pray without ceasing. There's no place that I read in this book right here that we can stop praying. Now that don't mean from the time we wake up to the time we lay down at night that we're constantly muttering a, a prayer <coughs> this, with these lips of ours. There wouldn't be anything wrong with it if we had the time to do it. But he's, he's wanting you and I to continually grow in prayer. I think I mentioned here the other night about these older brothers and sisters that we're with and they feel like they're not as much used to us anymore. But I'm thankful for the wisdom that's hand up in these, yeah. these heads of theirs. And I'm thankful that they've matured and they've grown as they've gone along the way they were supposed to. And we're all supposed to mature and grow as we go along. There's no place to quit. There's no place to stop. We've heard the old brother say there's no place to retire when we're a dead first fella laying here before everybody. That's when we're coming down to the point we can say we're retired. That's right. So when we're laboring and we're working, we're continually growing as Christians. We're continually maturing as his people here on this earth. And I'm thankful today that as we add to this, I heard what your daddy said, and I've referred to it before, Brother Don. Brother Nathan said, I was just a young boy, 15, 16 years old. He was uh, in his 90s and stood and preached and done a wonderful job. And no doubt a lot of knowledge had been canned up in that head of his. And he came to me, as I remember, right back here in the old building, out on the porch out there. He came to me before service, and he said, I, I'm just about finished with my race. I'm just about done with my ministry. He wished, he said, I wished it was like a hat, a helmet. I could just take off everything that I've got and I could just hand it over to you and you put it on as a young brother and take right off where I'm quitting you. But you know, it doesn't work that way tonight. We've got to continually grow ourselves. And if we stop our prayer life, I mean, we've been so much focused on prayer in our, our personal life lately and there's so much to it that I think prayer that we've been neglecting in our all of our lives as we've gone on, that we need to understand that there's every great movement, everything that's happened in Scripture, when God began to do a wonderful movement, you know what was behind it? The church was praying. Right. The revival, I'm going to mention the old building over here, the revival I was saved in at this church back all 30 years ago, but went on for several weeks, Brother Don. I remember as an unsaved person coming and I saw the labor of the church that was going on. You know what those brothers and sisters done, Brother Don and some of the brothers, they had the church door open around noon and everybody that was able, now there were some who had to work and couldn't come. You know what they were doing? They came and they bowed down and they were praying. What were they praying for? That the Lord would bless that service. Now let's ask ourselves here tonight, how many of us has taken time out to particularly pray for this service right here tonight? How many of us? I'm not asking you to raise your hand. How many of us have actually took time to pray for this service? If not today, down through the week. If our prayer life would reflect what we want done on the inside and we're talking to God. Is it, is it God's will to bless us? Is it God's will to bless this revival? Amen. It is. It's His will. Amen. But sometimes we as His children... We're not doing what that He wants us to do. Yeah, we're here. We're going through the motions. And we're going and, and, and being attentive. And we're trying our best to go through it. But until we fully, completely give ourselves to God and to what He wants in our lives, to use us as He can see fit in our life, not just here in this service, but out there, then we're not going to see the movement of God that He would like to move. So pray without ceasing. You brothers and sisters, don't quit that. Keep praying. Keep on growing in prayer. Keep on doing it morning. As Daniel or back there many times, other old brothers, but more than three times a day, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. I don't mean again, rejoice evermore, as he said. That don't mean just when things are going good. In everything, give thanks. I'm going through the worst time. I've lost this, I've lost that. Death is here, sickness here. Thank the Lord anyway. You know why? Because God can use you in those circumstances that you're going through. Right. God can use you as a light shining in the circumstance that you're in to be able to shine a bright light into this world. Why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What? 
to give thanks to God. That's His will for us to give thanks to Him tonight and to glorify His name. Yeah. Verse 19, quench not the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. That's, a, that's just four little words right there in one verse. Quench not the Spirit. And oh, as we begin to think about what that we could do to quench the Spirit in our own life, in a church service, in a church, in a capacity of a building, what can we do to quench it? If we're not doing what God wants us to do, then we can quench the Spirit. Many things can do that as an individual or as a church body. We can quench that spirit really quick if we're not real, real careful. Seen it many times in church services. Have a good, warm meeting, and all at once at the end, it's just like they pour cold water on it just because of what one brother might do or say or one sister might do or say. I've seen it happen. So what should we do? We should try to stay tuned in with that spirit so that we don't quench the Spirit, or put it out, to put it out and do what He doesn't want us to do. What can we do and put it? It's just like having a fire and you quench that fire and you put that fire out. As He began to speak back there to the one group of people, He began to speak about uh, that a bruised reed would He not break. You know what that is? That's just an old stalk that He would come along and find that reed there and if it had been bent or that it had been bruised in some way while that it was green, when it dried out, there wouldn't be no use out of that reed because it had a crack in it. But you know what? The Lord ain't going to take something that anybody else would just throw off to the side and not use. The Lord can take that and He can use something that may have a flaw in it. Remember, we've got faults, every one of us. And I'm thankful today that this little bruised reed right here that He didn't throw off to the side, that He's able to take His blood and He's able to take care of every fault, every sin, every shortcoming that I've got in my life. And He's able to take care of that in my life and in your life today. So He said a bruised reed, He's not going to break it and throw it off to the side. He said as we talk about quenching the Spirit, He said a smoking flax would He not quench. That's like a, uh, just think of a wick that's burning in a candle. If it don't have any oil in it, what's going to happen? It's just going to start smoking the globe up, smoking the house up, because there's no oil in there. They just take it and throw it away when it didn't have any fuel in it because it wouldn't do anything but blacken up the wall and everything else around it. They would take that smoking flax and they quench it. They put it out. But Jesus said He wouldn't take a smoking flax and put it out. But you know what He's able to do? He's able to take a little bit of oil of gladness and pour down upon it so that He's able to get a little bit of fuel to be able to brighten the light that might be shining rather than darkening up the glow as we go on. What did He tell us about our light? Shine it into this world. He told the church, you're the light of the world. Say a city that's set upon the hill which cannot be hid. So allow that light to shine into this world of darkness. Don't put it under a bushel. Don't be lazy. Put it under the bed. Don't be lazy and put it back under the bed to where nobody can see it, but put it up on the doorpost or in the window where everyone passing by can see it. Don't put it under that bushel where your work and everything else is going to uh, hinder the light that's shining out and all the things that you may obtain in this life. If you're not careful, it'll dim your light. But He's wanting us to allow it to shine brightly in this world of darkness today. So let's allow that oil of gladness to be down on the inside of this vessel. And let's not be like those foolish virgins like that. How they began to go and try to find some oil for their vessels. What happened when the, the cry began to come? They began to go try to find some. We don't have any. And the ones that did have some, they said, we can't give you ours. We've just got enough for ourselves. Uh, you can't do that. We find some folks one time in the scriptures that in the book of Acts that tried to go buy the gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and they, well, what they found out, you can't buy it. You can't buy this with money. Old Isaiah, we spoke of that river the other night, that water of life that's flowing just as free today, which is this spirit that he's told us not to quench. Old Isaiah began to speak, said, oh, come buy with that money. You can drink of it. You can have something. You can have something to eat down on the inside and it won't cost you a dime today. Why? Because God has fixed it up. 
that it doesn't take material things, but it takes things that he has spiritual. And he's wanting this right here to be submitted unto him. And not just at the time we're saved and we give it all over to him, but he's wanting this right here to be given to him continually as we go through this life. And from the time that we give it to him to the time the last breath goes out of it, we're to continually submit ourselves unto him. And if we'll do that, bless God, we'll have what we need as we go through this life. We won't have to ask our neighbor or our brother to give us something that we can be able to sustain ourselves until death comes up to us, but he'll give us exactly what we need to allow us to supply our needs according to his riches and glory. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on this earth where moth or rust doth corrupt or thieves do break through and steal, but rather lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where he said none of that would come. A moth can't corrupt it, the rust can't corrupt it, and none of those thieves can come in and take it away because God has it in safekeeping today and I'm thankful for what that he's provided for us as we go through this world. That fire that he's lit down on the inside of us, if we're not real careful, it'll just start flickering. It'll start getting dim. Uh, but bless his name forevermore. Let's allow it to shine brightly in this world of darkness so that he'll give us the tools we need to put out some other fires that come our way uh, that the old devil's trying to throw our life. And uh, you know what he's doing? The Bible teaches us in the book of Ephesians that he began to speak about uh, fiery darts coming our way. But he's provided us with something that's able to quench every one of them and put those fiery darts out as we go along with this armor that he's provided for us. And he said we can quench all the fiery darts uh, of the wicked. And if we have what that he supplied us with with all of that armor and that sword of the Spirit, uh, which is the Word of God, then we'll be able to do what he's told us to do as we're living here on this earth. Uh, so let's be real careful not to quench that and not be able to do the things that we shouldn't do. How can we quench it? Uh, there's many things we can do to quench it if we're not real careful uh, to do in our own life as a person uh, as we go in this journey of life. Uh, so let's, let's have our, our heart and our mind, our spirit tuned in to Him uh, and He'll lead us in the right direction as we're living here so that we won't do the wrong thing. Uh, we spoke the other night about that spirit. Uh, he began to say the spirit is saying come. Uh, that spirit is saying right now tonight it's speaking to you and I. The Apostle Paul began to speak to Timothy again, I believe in about the fourth chapter there, when he said, The Spirit speaketh expressly on this wise. You know what it started saying? How that there would be some heresies that would come along. How that there would be some men that would come along and start tickling men's ears and that people would be drawn away at their own lust and enticed as they began to go. Their damnable doctrines as he began to advise them. And we can look around as he said right here at Thessalonica. We can see as Paul began to declare unto Timothy that that same thing can occur in individual lives and it can occur in churches as well if we're not really careful listen to that Holy Spirit of God as it begins to speak to your soul and it will guide you away from some of this rotten doctrine that's all around us my friends tonight the old Baptist doctrine that we've held to for many many years I believe it and I'll die with it as far as my mind is right now I believe we've got a right somewhere else. We've got the doctrine. Uh, so let's hang on to what that it is and we need to realize this evening uh, that we are now in the minority uh, of a lot of these doctrines that's going around. Uh, things that still yet to come they'll tell you. Uh, but I thank my God this evening that the Spirit speaketh expressly. He has made it very plain. He has expressed His opinion uh, and if you will listen to what that Spirit begins to say and be directed by that Spirit and you listen to some of these fellows. I've heard Brother Nolan say many times, hey, you better watch that gentleman. Have you all heard him say that? Hey, you remember why did he say that? Because something about that man's spirit didn't agree with the spirit that was in him and it will tell us, it will teach us, it will guide us in the right direction if we will allow it to him. Let's be real cautious out there. Just because it gets results doesn't mean that it's correct. 
Just because the big crowd may be at this place or another doesn't mean that it's right. Uh, now, there might be some out there that's doing the right thing. Uh, that is getting the big crowd. Uh, and we can see how that God works. We can see God working in different places. Uh, and let's not get so blinded to just us right here in Old Bethlehem. As these brethren have preached over and over and over again, we're not the only little bunch. Uh, God has a church here upon this earth. And the fellow over on the other side of this earth that we can't understand a word he says if he was to preach to us here tonight, I can be blessed with this same spirit as you and I can here tonight. Amen. That's how God works, and I'm thankful for that. Amen. So let's be careful not to quench it. Let's not put it out. Let's allow it to do its work in our life. And if we try our best to do what that he wants, uh, we can very easily uh, allow that spirit to continually grow in our life while that we're living here on this earth. And uh, if we will follow after him, he will direct us. He will call. He will help us in the time that we need it. We may not know how to pray and uh, what to pray for, uh, but this book teaches me that that same spirit uh, that he said was saying come, uh, that he said was uh, speaking expressly on this wise, uh, that same spirit uh, is able to talk to the Father tonight uh, on your behalf and on my behalf uh, when it may not be, but oh God, uh, come from our lips or from our heart or our mind, uh, God is able to hear that and that Holy Spirit of God can take uh, that prayer right on to the Father tonight. Amen. You see, He's part of the Father. Let's not forget what that spirit is that we can quench it as part of that uh, triune God that we uh, serve and we love of God the Father, of uh, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit uh, that we're blessed to have here. It's part of that. And as we go through this life, we need to understand that we need His leadership, uh, that we need to get tuned in to how that it speaks to us. Uh, as we said, it'll tell us to come. Uh, it'll speak expressly and advise us the rotten doctrine. Uh, it'll begin to pray for us when we don't know what to pray for ourselves. Uh, so tonight, if we'll get in tune uh, with that Holy Spirit of God, uh, we'll not go in the wrong direction. Amen. As He began to go along, He not only told them to not quench that Holy Spirit, uh, but as He began to speak in another place, He told us, uh, don't you grieve that Spirit either. Uh, he told us that's another command. If you want to know how you can harm God, hurt His Yes, we can hurt him. Don't you think it hurts him uh, when his children reject what that he wants us to do? Uh, it hurts God's heart uh, when he looks down on his children living in disobedience. Uh, it hurts God's heart when he looks down and grieves his spirit when he sees us uh, not wanting to grow. Uh, when he sees us just sitting idle. Uh, when he sees us going backwards even uh, in the wrong direction. It hurts God's heart uh, when he looks upon us. Us. And I want you to understand tonight that this that you're looking at and these bodies that I'm looking upon here tonight, and these bodies he told you and I are for what? For the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God. And that that's what he has come in and dwells in. This body is for the indwelling of that Holy Spirit. And if we're not real careful, think about what it under the law. And the Shekinah glory of God came down to that temple there at a certain time and dwelt there. But now he's dwelling inside of me and you tonight. That's something we ought to be happy about. We ought to rejoice about. You talk about rejoicing evermore. That ought to be something we thank him for this evening. And being thankful in all things. Yeah, on the bad thing. That's a good thing we can thank him for tonight. For that precious Holy Spirit. That living water. That speaks to us. That advises us and helps us to steer us away from rotten doctrine. And people that might deceive us. That will pray for us when we don't know what to pray for ourselves. That's something to rejoice and remore about. Uh, that's something to have uh, thanksgiving in our hearts for tonight. Uh, to be able to give Him glory and praise and honor for what that He's done. Uh, but think about this Holy Spirit that comes in the believer. Uh, and begins to dwell on the inside. Uh, and takes up His abode in this body that we're living in. Uh, bless God tonight when it took up its residence in here. Uh, that Spirit tonight uh, 
God, when you look upon something with that spirit living down on the inside of you, that spirit knows what you're looking at. It knows if you're looking at the words of this book every day and reading it or not. It knows if you're closing those eyes and beginning to talk to God through that spirit or not. And it knows if that eye starts wandering in the wrong direction to look upon things that you should not look upon. That little song that the children sing sometimes. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. And oh, no greater thing can be said. And for that spirit that's down here, when these eyes are looking where they shouldn't be, and that grieves that Holy Spirit down on the inside. It hurts my God when we do those things. Not just these eyes, but sometimes those things, these ears right here may hear, and not just rotten doctrine by bad uh, preaching somewhere that teach people wrong, uh, but some of the things that goes in these ears of ours and in these eyes, uh, they can completely condemn an individual if we're not real careful. Uh, the old brother used to call that TV that one-eyed monster uh, that can get you and uh, get a grasp on you. It's even worse than that now. Uh, they got more channels than those old brother never dreamed about watching. And now we've got the internet and they can go and see things that they never dreamed about seeing with their own eyes before. And so be careful little eyes of what you see. Be careful little ears of what you listen to. Why? And because that Holy Spirit, you can grieve my Father. And that Holy Spirit of God that's dwelling down in your heart tonight. And by the things you're listening to, it may be the music that you listen to. It may be the TV programs that you're watching and listening to. It may be those buddies at work that you're listening to and some of the things that they're saying and doing, thinking it's all and fun and good times. But it's totally filth and contrary to God's Word. You know what this book teaches you and I? He says we will be judged for every idle word that comes out of this mouth right here. And you know what? Some of them began to speak about things that you eat and defile in the body and he let them know real quick. It's not altogether what goes in the body that defiles it, but what comes out of it. Amen. This tongue right here is an evil member full of deadly poison. You can kill a brother or sister with it. It is deadly. Oh, my friend, tonight we ought to be very cautious with what that it is. These eyes of ours, you can commit adultery and fornication with these eyes right here. Just by looking on a man or a woman, you brothers and sisters, and having that desire swelling up on the inside of you to do those things with them. And my friend, tonight we ought to be very cautious because we have that Holy Spirit dwelling in us and to be able to stay away from those things and not have touch with these hands as the Scripture Scripture began to advise us to touch not, handle not of the unclean thing. And because He's told us that we've come out from among the world and we're separate tonight. We'll do those things. He'll help us to overcome them. Why? Because that spirit that's down there that we can so easily grieve and make sorrowful in our heart. You know what? It's greater than this flesh right here. It's got the upper hand on it. It's stronger than it is. I thank my God this evening that because I've got Him living down on the inside, I'm able to control what these eyes look at. Amen. I'm able to control what these ears hear. I'm able to control what this tongue speaks because of that spirit down on the inside. Amen. I couldn't control these eyes or ears or tongue or this flesh. I couldn't control any of that without that spirit that's going on the inside of us. Because it teaches us. It speaks to us. It condemns us. If we're not real careful, he'll, he'll begin to use that chastening rod. What's the Bible say about that? He says those that he loves, he chastens. I'm thankful for those whippings. Have you ever had a weapon church? Has he ever whipped you? If he's not whipped you, you might begin to look at yourself and take an inventory to find out if you're where you need to be or not. Because every one of us have experienced that chastening rod of God that condemns us. He's blessed us to have enough sense in these heads of ours to know when we're going the wrong direction and that spirit will speak to us. Help us and help us lead in the right direction. So tonight, let's allow this right here to guide us. Let's be real careful not to quench it. Let's be real careful not to grieve it. Because if we do that, God is not pleased with us. 
We don't want to make him sad. We don't want to make him happy. That's why we're here tonight. We're not here to grieve him. We're not here to grieve him in this service. We are here to praise him, to give him glory, to give him honor for everything that he's done in our lives. To uplift the service that will be pleasing to him this evening. Because he's done so much for us. And we do so little for him. Amen. So let's try to step up a little bit and not be mindful. Let's all be mindful where he's at right here. He said that kingdom is within you. It's down on the inside of us. That spirit of God is down on the inside of us. He's able to help us as we go through this life. Remember what he told that woman at the well we referred to the other night? He said it would be a well of water springing up on the inside of you. There's that spirit under what? Unto everlasting life. Amen. So let's take it and get it on the inside. I knew you and me. Take a drink of it. Get it on the inside. And continually have that desire to drink of that fountain. He will not lead us in the wrong direction. Amen. God, I'm just going to quit right there. Maybe there's somebody if you want to close out. Go ahead and close out. Go ahead and close out. Paul, players, come on up.
I watched last night. I spent watching the meetings down through the week. Some good people could put them on Facebook. I enjoyed so much, but after I listened to it last night, I, I watched Brother Cody Dam preach. And years ago, I could see all the brothers going on now. Yeah, yeah. One by one, they slipped away. There they were. I could see them at the very big screen I've got. It's so real. And I thought one of these days, I'm going to slip away and be with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just a heartbeat. Just a heartbeat, and they tell me this whole heart is getting weaker. But they put a ticker or a thing in here to make it run right, but I was just a heartbeat. I may be in heaven this time tomorrow night. Yeah, that's right. I never know about that. He good, wasn't This old body you may take him and put him in the ground somewhere. But I'm gonna leave out of it. Lord. And I'm going somewhere. In the presence of Getting ready to leave this world. Are you ready? Is there anything you need fixed up? If there's anything you need fixed up, you ought to fix it. Because this might be your last opportunity. We could be leaving this world. You know? We're getting old. All these names out here on the wall we've got on that on that wall is put their names up there that was members of this church. I knew every one of them. I've been here about almost 62 years. Almost 62 years. I believe Brother Don got a year or so on me. He's about 63 or so. I've watched all of them people here come and go, one to one. I dream about it after I watched Brother Cully preaching last night, and all the brothers, Brother George over there, and, and, and there were so many that's not with us today. Oh, I miss them so much. We ought to have that love, Brother Tony in our hearts that when we want to leave that we're missing you. We all tell one another how we feel. If we feel bad about you, Brother Roger, I'll tell you about it. Tell me about it. Not fix it up. If we've got children, look to me like you could fix things. Mm -hmm. If you both have the very God, we're little children. We act like little children sometimes. We sure do. We're not above uh, getting a little bit out of order. But if we got the Spirit of God down in our lives, we ought to be big enough to go out and tell the brother. You can fix it up. You can fix it up. I've done that. I know it can be done. Brother called me not very long ago. He said, hey, there's some clouds coming up between me and you. And he said, it's a bother me. We need to talk. I made a beeline for his house. And we sat down and talked about it. And then clouds moved away, brother. That's the way you do it. That's the way the Lord wants you to do it. I believe God pleased with that. Yes. And if you're pleased with you, he'll bless you. And if you're not getting a blessing from God, there's something wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, bless you, sweet God. Anyone else have anything to say before we close? I get the right return. You don't matter. <laughs> you be praying for it. The Lord bless you. That's all. You can see yourself dismissed from this service for our next.